Hey everyone, welcome back to POA for you. It's Leroy again, and today I'm gonna to go through 2021's old level specimen paper, paper one, question three. Topics on non current asset, and this is at a request of my train who has uh, asked me to do all of paper one, uh, 2021 specimen questions. So I'm gonna to attempt to do all of it, and this is the one of the questions within that. I uh, hope you guys enjoy that and if you think you your friend could benefit from this video, please feel free to share it with them. Okay, non-current assets. This what you see here is a sale of motor vehicle ledger account and by this you need to understand the how to prepare uh, or how to compute the gain or loss on a sale of a non-current asset. And you do it through the sale of a motor vehicle account whereby you are transferring the cost of motor vehicles, the accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles to get the net book value of the motor vehicle all in one place in this sale of motor vehicle account. And then you put, it, put the proceeds that you get from the sale of this motor vehicle uh, together in this account to come up with the profit or loss or the gain or loss on the sale of motor vehicle so this is exactly what the sale or motor vehicle account is doing if you can see here the first line motor vehicles is the cost of the motor vehicle account and i would say that this motor vehicle cost twenty four thousand. the accumulated depreciation to date is eleven thousand seven, and this balance here twelve thousand two hundred and eighty eight represents the net book value of the asset and you would only put these two into the same account the sale motor vehicle account when you sell them so that once you get the net book value you will put aside how much you are getting from the sale uh in this case you sold it to speedy cars for ten thousand eight hundred, and you are making a loss of fourteen thousand because the net book value is twelve thousand you're selling it for ten thousand plus and therefore you're selling it lesser than the net book value of the asset and therefore it will be a loss and this loss is then transferred to the statement of financial performance so in a nutshell that's what's happening they've asked us to interpret each of these entries each entry of the uh, sale or motor vehicle and i just realized that something may be covered in my uh, and and each of these entries and it includes yeah it's hidden there motor vehicles accumulated depreciation other receivables and income summary so all of this so let's look at the first part first right motor vehicle uh, account right so what i've done is you first need to t say what's happening is a one mark question each so they expect just a simple one-liner uh, and your simple one-liner for me oops uh, show a bit too much would be just this okay cost of motor vehicle so is 24,000 now you, you may be wondering how, how did I get that so you need to be able to understand from this the journal entries behind this ledger was actually debit sale of motor vehicles and credit motor vehicles because you, what you're doing in a sale of motor vehicles uh, account is you are bringing into this account the cost of the motor vehicles so you're closing off the motor vehicle account and putting this balance into the sale of motor vehicle account and if i were to let you see further what the motor vehicle account would look like you know uh, then it will look like this in the motor vehicle account this leisure maybe the motor vehicle account had a balance of 24,000 and you are closing this motor vehicle off because this motor vehicle account is debit in nature so to close it off you credit it which is actually what this double entry did and when you have a credit entry you have to have a debit entry and this debit entry actually was to the sale of motor vehicle account which is exactly what this question has indicated so you're transferring this debit balance from the motor vehicle at cost account into the sale of motor vehicle account on the debit side as well by doing this double entry now i want you to try the accumulated depreciation using the same concept without looking at my video right just pause the video now okay i'm going to show you my answer now all right so my one-liner answer is the accumulated depreciation of the motor vehicles at the time of sale is 11,700, right? And how do I know that? Because I know that this is a credit to sale motor vehicle account. The debit has to be to accumulated depreciation of motor vehicles because that's what the particulars, the particulars always indicate the other side of the double entry, right? So I know the journal entry is the so it's debit accumulated depreciation because I'm closing the accumulated depreciation account and bringing that balance into the credit side of the sale or motor vehicle account. So in the accumulated depreciation account, the activity would actually look like this where the accumulated depreciation 
depreciation account had a credit balance of 11,700 and I've closed this off by debiting it and it will be zero but I'm crediting uh, the sale of motor vehicle account at the same time. So I'm bringing this credit balance across to this sale motor vehicle account. Now with this, I have the net book value in this sale motor vehicle account. So let's see what's happening in part three. So part three, my answer is, I've sold the motor vehicle to Speedy on credit for 10,800. Why on credit? Because it is to other receivables. If you sold it to on cash or by if Speedy Cars gave you a check for this, then it will be cash at bank, right? And in this case, the double entry would be debit other receivables speedies credit sale motor vehicle and how do i know this because on the sale motor vehicle account the credit the number appears on the credit side so the credit has to be to the sale motor vehicle account and the debit has to be to the account in the particulars right so it's always like that if you look at all my other double entries the other side of the entry is always in the particulars of the ledger account now let's take a look at what the other receivables account uh, look like okay and this is what it looks like now where you have oops i have something else here um the sale of motor vehicles you are going to other receivables you're going to debit this and the particulars will be the other side of the journal entry which is the sale of motor vehicles account ten thousand eight hundred. okay that's it. Now, income summary, what does this say? This essentially is telling you that, okay, in this account, you have calculated that uh, the balance here is a debit balance. And whatever is a debit balance, it's a loss, right? Because like expense, expense is a um, debit nature and income is a credit nature. Similarly, gain is a um, credit nature and loss is a debit nature because gain is like an income. Um, whereas ex uh, loss is like an expense. So what do I say here as a summary? It's a loss on sale of motor vehicle is 14,888. And this will be reflected in the statement of financial performance. All right. Next part of the question is, uh, this person extended his uh, shop premise, right? For 17,005, but then including included in this 17,005, it's $1,500 that has been paid to repairs of the existing shop premise. And they are telling you, uh, and this whole total 17,005 was included in a statement of financial performance. So what is the effect of doing this to the profit and non-current assets so essentially this is testing you on your concept of capital and revenue expenditure capital expenditures are those one-time uh, stuff uh, that are usually huge that will last you for a long time so a building extension for example will last the shop owner for a long time and help them with generating revenues in the future but repairs will be short term and those are usually repairs are done you know whether monthly quarterly yearly and so those are normally hitting uh, considered an expense or a revenue expenditure i've got a video on non-current assets and this could really help you guys so go search for it um now um so what my answer to this is that this profits will be understated by sixteen thousand dollars and the non-current asset as well will be understated by sixteen thousand dollars now how did i get that that's your question right because i think it's important to understand uh, the rationale for this so i've done this small table at the bottom here to tell you that hey out of the seventeen thousand five hundred, it's actually split into one thousand five for repairs and sixteen thousand dollars therefore is for the cost of the extension the cost of the the repairs would flow into the statement of financial performance as a, an expense that's you know by right it should be that um and sixteen thousand should flow into the financial statement of financial position as a non-current asset but what happened is this sixteen thousand dollars has gone into the statement of financial performance as well so it's gone into the statement of financial performance as an expense and therefore expense being inversely related to profits will bring down profits if the expense are unnecessarily higher so that's why i say it's understated by sixteen thousand similarly if this sixteen thousand was in the statement of financial performance incorrectly in there then it will not be reflected in as a non-current asset in the statement of financial position so 
non, uh, the non-current assets will also be understated by the same amount of 16,000. Okay, hope this has been helpful for you guys. Are there any more questions for this? No more. Okay, hope this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, and if you guys have any questions, please send me those questions. I've got some videos that I've said, I put the link in uh, earlier. I gave you the link or the search uh, key phrase earlier. Hope you go look, go look at those videos and uh, those will be really helpful for you guys. All right, take care for now.